Here's our Avalokiteshvara from Swayambhu. He's got a, a, a slightly cheeky face, maybe. I don't know. This is a slight smile there on his many faces. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's just settle into a nice, comfortable sitting position. And, you know, do the best you can. If you can't sit up, um, that's okay as well. And just have your feet connecting with the earth if you are sitting on a chair, if that works for you. Shoulders are aligned with the hips and just lengthen your spine. Really trying to put some space in between those vertebrae. And take a nice deep breath. Don't forget to breathe. So one way, one technique, one breathing technique for <clears throat> stabilizing the mind that's taught in the tradition of yoga. No, yoga and Buddhism come from the same place. So many of the techniques that we learn in Buddhism originated in India. So this one that I quite like, I find it useful, is just to equalize the breath. So just before we, you know, before we keep going, just imagine inhaling for a count of four. So four, three, two, one. And just pause for a moment and then exhale. Four, three, two, one. And then inhale again. Four, three, two, one. And exhale, four, three, two, one. And breathe. Just relax the technique. And just feel, just notice if there's a difference. Now just notice if there's sounds in your environment. The world is waking up a little bit later. It's quite dark in the mornings here now. So everything's kind of quiet. But where some of you are, you're already quite far into your morning. So there'll be a little bit more sound, people moving about the house, neighbors, cars. So just allow all of those sounds to be there. Try not to follow them with the mind. And take a nice deep breath. And notice the thoughts that are arising. Uh, thoughts of perhaps worry or sadness. Thoughts of um, remembering. And just classify them, categorize them. Just take a step back from them. Our thoughts are always going to be there. They're, they're not something that we can stop. But we can put some space in between the thoughts. We can control what it is we think. And the first step we need to make is to just notice what's even there. You know, I love this analogy that Rabina always uses about, you know, you're driving your car down the freeway and the wheels start to fall off. Well, 
that's how we are mentally. We would never do that with our car. We always go and take it to a service. So we don't have to be in a state of uh, depression or anxiety or some kind of crisis before we need to go and get do some work on our mind. So just allow the thoughts and be curious. And absolutely, don't judge what's there. Just be happy to see whatever it is that's arising. And then notice all the people of your life, our loved ones. You know, there is always someone in our life that we have or have had a very deep and profound relationship with. And then there's our people that we don't like. You know, they pop up out of left field sometimes. And then there's our strangers. And they can all change place at any time. So keep that in mind. This is a this idea of impermanence and change. And then think that they're all equal. They have this extraordinary wish to be happy, this wish to be free from suffering and in having this extraordinary capacity for Buddhahood. So we'll do this meditation on Chinrezig today. The benefit of all these people of our life and dedicate it. I think we just keep dedicating for him and for Lorraine's knee. You know, everybody has something going on in their life, so you know you can dedicate for that, motivate for that. So just imagine that all of space is filled with these beings. They're all sitting around you and they're extending beyond the horizon. So if you can, if it's difficult to think of more than just, you know, those few friends, enemies and strangers, just think of as many as you can, comfortably. So you think, think of your parents and your really dear friends, maybe family members. This is the, this is the ones that you get on with, right? Behind you. As a support. Different meditations place the friends in different places, but here the friends are behind. They've got your back. The people that you don't get along with so well, right in front, eyeball to eyeball, and then everybody else all around. So contemplate the suffering of all these people and these beings and think about the suffering of you know the people that you're close to. So maybe there's someone in your life that you is kind of going through something right now and maybe try and see how they're suffering. You know, it's unbearable for us, isn't it? We, we just, sometimes you just can't help someone. If you have a very dear friend you love and they're going through a period of perhaps depression or something, oof. really open your heart to the physical and psychological problems they're experiencing and think that just like you, they want to be free of all suffering and feel how wonderful it would be if they were free of all suffering and could enjoy the peace and bliss of enlightenment. And then think of the people you don't like or who have hurt you. And imagine their suffering, their physical pain and discomfort and 
perhaps feelings of loneliness and insecurity and fear and dissatisfaction and maybe they might have hurt you but they may have hurt many other people as well so they might be a little bit lonely but just like you they don't want problems and they have no choice as long as the mind is confused and ignorant of the way things really do exist it's never going to find peace so open your heart to these folks for whom you normally feel irritation or anger and just allow your heart to soften a little bit around that and now expand your awareness to take in the troubles and pain of other human beings and of animals whoever is has an uncontrolled mind is suffering I was driving down the freeway, the highway yesterday, and there was one car that was in a lane that was a little bit too close. And I was getting kind of, a little, I, was, I was a bit shocked and a bit uh, taken aback. And then I looked to my right to see the car, and it was quite an elderly person driving it. And then, of course, comes compassion because it's not going to be very long before that person perhaps is no longer going to be able to drive. So with that, they're going to lose a considerable amount of freedom and independence. So then to take in perhaps that person, that's the stranger, and think about what the circumstance might be in a way that we don't normally. But uh, it's a good idea to try and not get too overwhelmed. Don't take in too much. Sometimes it just is too much to deal with. Uh, suffering and unhappiness are all experiences that are subject to impermanence and often arise because of misunderstandings, emotions that get confused, stories that we make up. Sometimes once the cause has been eliminated, the, the, these problems disappear. So it's a matter of each of us working on our own minds and dealing with our own misconceptions and our own negativities, taking responsibility and gradually developing a correct understanding of the way things really do exist. And if we can't do that just yet, we just have to generate this idea <clears throat> that things might not exist the way we think they do. And I guess we know that. Anyway, there are plenty of examples in our life of how we misunderstand or misinterpret even something as simple as an email or a text. So I feel strongly that we'll do this, uh, all of our practices, to help others be free of suffering. So imagine just above the crown of your head and facing the same way as you, Shen Rezik. And he is the manifestation of pure, unobstructed compassion, love, and wisdom. His body is white, and it's made of light, and transparent and radiant. So really try and feel the living presence of this Buddha above the crown of your head, this compassion Buddha. And you don't have to imagine all of those arms and hands and heads that's in this particular statue, you can just imagine this uh, light, ball of white light above the crown of your head emanating <clears throat> compassionate healing energy. His face is beautiful and smiling and he radiates love to you and all the beings surrounding you. So you can imagine just the forearms they're the four main arms on that statue. 
and his first two hands are held together at his heart <clears throat> in prayer. And in her hands, he's holding a jewel that fulfills all the wishes. And his second two hands are raised to the level of his shoulders. And the right hand is holding a crystal rosary and the left a white lotus. And he's sitting on a, a, a white moon disc on an open lotus. His legs are crossed in the full Fajra posture, the full lotus posture. So each foot over the opposite thigh. And he's wearing exquisite silk and precious jewels all over his body. So try and hold your awareness with this visualization. Try and make this visualization stable, but stay relaxed and comfortable and just open your heart to Chen Rezig's serene and loving energy. I'll now make a, a prayer or a wish, aspiration from your heart to overcome any misconceptions and negative energy and to develop pure love and compassion for all beings equally. And in this way, really feel you're connecting with your own true nature, your highest potential. And in response to your request, Chen Rezig very lovingly sends streams of white light. And this light fills every cell and every atom of your body and purifies all your negativities and all your problems and all your past harmful actions and your potential to give harm in the future. And, and so just we'll start with that. Om Mani Padme Hum 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 
And imagine your body feels light and blissful and your mind peaceful and clear. Now imagine the light from Chinrezi radiates out to every living being, purifying their negative energy and filling them with bliss. Oh, mani padme ho. Oh, mani padme ho. Oh, mani padme hum. Oh, mani padme hum. Oh, mani padme hum. Oh, mani padme hum. Oh, mani padme hu. Oh, mani padme hu. Oh, mani padme hu. Oh, mani padme hu. Oh, mani padme ho. 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 Now imagine Chinrezig dissolving into white light. This flows down through the crown of your head and reaches your heart chakra. And your mind, Chinrezig's mind, and I didn't mention this in the beginning, but you can also imagine that this Chinrezig is also the manifestation of the mind of your teacher. So your teacher's mind, all merging into one. And you feel complete tranquility and complete bliss and calmness in your heart. A settling. So we'll meditate on this for a couple of minutes. 
And so when this usual sense of I starts to arise, bored, restless, hungry, got to do something, just think that that's not quite your real self. And just very quietly, very simply bring your mind back again and again to this experience of being one with these qualities of Chen Rezig's mind, infinite love and infinite compassion. And let's just dedicate all the positive energy created from doing this meditation to the happiness and the health of all living beings. Okay, everybody, thank you so very much. There is a note here, I just want to read it. Paul, how can I join the evening meditation? So, where's Paul? There. Um, Paul, you can go to the same website that um, you joined this meditation on and at the bottom of the page is the Vajrasattva meditation so there should be a link there hope that's clear well thank you I will okay. join oh I'd love to have you okay great wonderful thank you nice to see you all there's Gary I haven't seen Gary for a while Bill yeah nice to see everybody all right, have a wonderful day. I will see you guys tonight. Okay, thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you.